recording and we're recording hello this. everyone we're here with sonia today and hi everyone how are you she's about to tell us about the beyond, beyond Botox Botox. Facial. so this is a facial i created a number of years ago um i had been already using circadia products and um i came up with a name because it really is beyond botox i think eventually the name will be changed um just to protect myself with using the word Botox, but the facial really is beyond Botox. If you go on um, Circadia's website or my website or my web, um, Instagram page, I have a lot of before and after photos. Um, but with this uh, facial, what I'm doing is uh, germplane, a lactic acid, and the firming peptide mask from Circadia. And it is, it's a 90 minute facelift. And I'm not just saying that, it absolutely is a 90 day facelift. The results that I have found, uh, there are about four to six days, four to seven days, depending on the baseline of the client, you'll have that face lift effect. But of course there are long-term benefits as far as increasing uh, microcirculation in the skin, which also uh, aids in lymphatic drainage, removing waste. Um, so there's just so many benefits. It's one of my favorite advanced facials to do with the product line and including dermaplaning with no downtime. So if someone comes in on a Friday and they have a wedding Saturday, they can easily have that three combo and then look absolutely stunning for their event Saturday. Um, somebody asked if you could please say the protocol again. It, I, could you please repeat that? If you could please say the protocol, um, would you be able to repeat the steps again? Oh, absolutely. And you know what? I can post it. I actually keep it in a file on my phone. Um, it's also accessible on Circadia U and um, I believe circadia.com or definitely the circadia education forum there's a little button that says file and then you open up the file and then there is all our protocols that we just publish for our clients to have so with this facial you're going to do a double cleanse i like the vitamin veil the lipid replacing cleanser i let the skin just naturally dry i do a little check on the client's skin make sure they're nice and dry i dive into the dermaplane and then I will follow up with a lactic acid, so a gel-based peel, and then remove using PK neutralizer. And then I will put on the firming peptide mask. And because that has to marinate for a little while, like 25, 30 minutes, because we really want to give um, the skin on the the skin that cardiac workout right where we're, we're bringing the blood removing the waste bringing the blood removing the waste so we want to give um the skin that that workout for about 25 minutes during that time what i actually like to do is i'll do the hand arm massage during during that but i will also do a dry brushing so for those of you yeah so it gives me Anyone that's tried to make a 25 minute arm massage last knows it's kind of hard. So I get creative. Um, I'll use a dry brush, right? I'll do dry brushing. This also helps stimulate um, the lymph nodes in the circulatory system. And then I'll do a nice lengthy hand arm massage. And then after that, I'll actually use um, a mask. I like the Well CBD. Um, they're partnered with Circadia as well. I will put um, a hydrating mask on their arms, wrap it in a hot towel. I'll go and assess uh, the skin with the mask. If I feel like it's uh, cooked, we'll say cooked, right? So the, it's nice and dry. It's cooked. I'm going to remove that mask. I'm going to remove the mask using the snow algae and then also the lipid replacing cleanser mixed together to make a nice frothy own consistency in a ball. And then I'm going to remove the mask with that, put on a hot towel to emulsify the rest of um, the mask because anyone that's used it knows it's like a little bit rigid as it's dried. So I'll put a nice hot towel on them, a little compress to really work those products in. I'll let them sit for a moment. I'll go back to the arms. I'll take the hot towel and then I will do a nice removal of that hydrating mask put their arms underneath, nice and comfy. And then I will go into my removing um, the towel and then I'll go into my typical facial massage and then ending ceremony. And by then it should be like a solid 
uh, 90 minutes. Oh, I missed extractions. I actually do extractions. I do extractions with that. Some people always ask, like, do you do extractions? Absolutely. Go on in there. Get some extractions done. Um, <laughs> so extractions are there. So by the time you're done, beginning to end, um, it should be like a nice 90-minute treatment. I charge $320 for that. That was and, a question that was coming. Yeah. I did. I charge three twenty for that. People don't even bat an eye. Um, I, I live in upstate New York. Some people say, oh, you live in New York City. You can charge those prices. Honey, no. I live in upstate. I am as close to Canada as I am to New York. So I'm like right in the middle. There's cities, but there's also a lot of farm. So, um, but my clients pay for it because it's an amazing service. They get the results they're looking for um, and everybody's happy. And you're booked out for like months. So yes, I'm booked out for months. Uh, this is, I'm at the point that every esthetician has always dreamed of being at. Um, and so my, my young estheticians here are like, oh my gosh, I can't wait for that. Or, um, which is what we dream of is being booked, but you want to be booked perfectly. And this is something I learned when I took Lori Crete's um, class. It's the beauty biz club. Um, she has a podcast. Uh, she has an Instagram, go check it out, Lori Crete. But I did not have the mindset of a money-making esthetician. I really didn't. When I first started, I just wanted to take care of people and I love to give them energy. And I love to just do a lot of therapeutic, low price services. And I gave half of everything away. Once you shift you, your mindset as a therapist into a money-making <laughs> esthetician, that's when things change. You want to make sure that everything you are investing in whether it's products, a company, a piece of equipment, that has to make you money. Otherwise, this is a hobby. If it doesn't make you money and you're purchasing it, it's because you just like it, but it's going, it's not going to be helping your, your career in any way. And that's why I love dermaplaning. I love the return on my investment. So when I am dermaplaning, my margins are my margins are like this big. My basic treatment is 110 and it costs me $2 to perform. What are the steps That's for that thing. one? So the dermaplaning facial? Yeah. So dermaplaning, you're always, if they are doing a standalone service or if they're doing a full facial, let's just say they're doing a full facial, okay? Whatever your favorite facial is at your spa, it could be your deluxe facial relaxation, whatever it is. If you have a client that's interested in dermaplaning, it will actually replace whatever your uh, exfoliating process would have been in that facial. Traditionally with the guts of the facial, the exfoliation phase is between 15 and 20 minutes. Um, even if it's enzymatic, whether it's a scrub, AHA, BHA, what, it still has marinating and removal time, which typically equates to about 15 minutes. You can, once you're proficient, do a, derma, a full face dermaplane in 15 minutes and increase your, your revenue by a lot, depending on what the, what the base of your other facial is. But like I said, mine is 110 with any facial. So that's what I'm charging. Um, and it takes about 15 minutes. So you can do your cleanse. So your double cleanse, um, dermaplane, extraction, your mask, your massage, whatever order you do it in. I know some people like to do it differently. Um, hand arm massage, and then whatever add-ons you want to put on that. But it's so easy. It's so easy. And especially if you have um, staff members or a franchise, or even if you're a solo esthetician, your client doesn't have to rebook for this. It's not a huge process. You are the tool, right? So I want estheticians, especially when they go to circadiau.com, sign up for my class. I want you to get so proficient at this skill that you don't know the difference between the tool and the talent. You are, you are one when you are working with dermaplaning. Um, and you can get that down into 15 minutes and your clients are going to be so happy. They will never book another facial without it. If they come back and they didn't get it, Treatment number three, they're going to tell you, I'm never not going to have that again. From here on out, I'm adding on dermaplaning. It's a, it's a home run. It's a home run. I love that. Um, yeah. Are we going to do like a little demo today? We can do, I don't have a motto, 
we're I don't have a model. Okay. Um, you want to give some tips and tricks? Also, yeah, one yes, absolutely. but I also want to invite everybody because I always feel like there's so many dermaplaning questions. So I yes. want to invite you guys because like here's the time to ask the question, right? So yes. turn on your mics. You're welcome to turn on your cameras. It's not just your mics mm -hmm. or put it in the chat. Mm -hmm. If you guys have any questions for Miss Sonia. Yeah. And what I had noticed last time we did a demo, I believe our last video. And just so you guys know that Maria, that should still be pinned and saved, correct? I do have it. Yeah. Okay, good. So what I had noticed last time we did a live, we had so many questions, um, but it was harder for me to go back and then look and then answer. Um, so what I would encourage, if you really want to see a demo, one, I'll do one next time. And two, you can always go back to the video that we had posted showing the demo. Today, we can just do rapid fire questions with dermaplaning and I can help you build a protocol around that as well as, oh, wait a minute, we have a coupon code for them, don't we? We do. Let me grab it. One second. We do. So anyone that is part of the money-making esthetician, you guys get 10% off the dermaplaning course. So I believe it is the coupon code is MMSD and SD is E-S-T-Y, not I-E, because I know a lot of times we spell it I-E. So M-M-E-S-T-Y. You're going to go to circadiau.com to register. That's where the program is housed. And you'll see a, a pleather of education material there. So even if you are not utilizing our products in the back bar, um, this is a great opportunity to become acquainted with the products. It's a great introduction. And I'm telling you, you're going to fall in love with our philosophies, our protocols. The products speak for themselves and definitely the results speak for themselves. So go on there. And we have even actually... Um, uh, gua sha. We have a little gua sha video. We have a booty facial video. We have hydrofacial video. We, there's, there's so much you're going to want to register. Even if you're not interested in the course right now, um, go and register. And then that's actually bringing me to um, the next question that is um, asked. If you are already certified, is this course worth it? Yes. Yes, I have 18 years into the making of this program. There's so much information. So if you were trained um, at another place of work, if you were trained by somebody else or had another company, that's okay. If you are ready for more advanced training or you'd like to hear um, my technique, how and why I, I choose to work the way that I do or combine the things that I do, you're still going to want to invest into the program. You're, you're not going to regret investing in the program. So one of the questions, do you always do it dry? Okay, so I get asked this all the time. This is my personal perspective. Sometimes I oil plane, mostly I dry plane. I support oil planing. If you want to oil plane, uh, absolutely, you can utilize the vitamin veil. You can utilize, if the client isn't sensitive, you can util utilize the Hydrolux. I know some people really like the consistency of the Hydrolux, but we are talking little bits, little drops, like drop, drop. That's it. Why? And then, so you're going to pat your hands. You're going to have your client, and then you're going to disperse it like this. Then you're going to psh, psh, remove your gloves because your gloves are going to have oil on it. You're going to get new gloves and then you're going to work on your client. I prefer dry planing because when, when I'm working, I will only work with a stainless steel wand. I will not be using a disposable wand. Um, the stainless steel wand allows you while you're working to feel the vibrational feedback while working on the client. You can feel when the skin is really rough. You can feel when you're going over and obviously see when you're going over terminal hair, um, thicker keratinized skin. Um, you can feel that vibration. And when you are really starting to exfoliate and remove the proper layers, it tends to glide, right? And then that's when you know, okay, maybe I don't need to do seven strokes. We're gonna leave it at six for this zone because that's most appropriate. When you put the oil on, it does camouflage the true skin. Um, it camouflages the condition of the skin, right? Because it's making it nice and smooth and um, 
I want to say like pliable to work with the blade, right? If I'm meeting resistance, that resistance is for a reason. So if the skin is compromised in an area, um, if there's skin breakdown, if there's a rough patch, if there is underlying psoriasis, eczema, whatever it is that I could possibly pick up while working, I want to be able to feel that. And when you put oil on, you don't have that feedback with the, with, with the wand. You don't have that sensation. Now, I know there's plenty of people out there that love oil cleaning. They swear by it. You do you. You do you. But with me in my treatment rooms, I'm always adding. I am adding uh, caviar lime. I'm putting drops of lactic acid in that to give it a nice boost. I am doing the zymates. I am doing... Um, I'm doing a lot of stuff back here. What I find is if that I oil plane and I am not in tune with the level and depth of exfoliation based on the barrier health of the client, once I start adding, um, I can run into a little bit of trouble. Sometimes the clients will get hot spots and they're like, yeah, this spot really burns or this spot. Um, it's because I might have exfoliated that area mm -hmm. too much. So I, I'm always thinking ahead. How much am I adding after the dermal plane? Because I'm going to want to know what the true skin is telling me. Because each square inch of tissue in each zone, um, because you'll find in my program, everything is mapped out. You are not willy-nilly dermal planing anywhere you want. Everything is mapped out into zones, sections, how many strokes you need to do in each zone. Okay, so each section, each square, I want to be able to tell per square inch, I can customize the depth of exfoliation based on the texture, tone, and condition of the skin. And you just kind of lose that sense with the oil planing. That's totally. my long story short. <laughs> totally. Um, it's funny because now when I do the dermaplaning, after taking your course, I do find mm -hmm. myself trying to really pay attention to like the true skin and it's yes. so different. I would say too, I love the fact that there is no like AHA prior to taking it mm -hmm. off because I found that before it would just feel different. The handling just felt different. It does. Um, and that's why I love the lipid replacing cleanser as the prep. Um, I have worked with multiple, multiple other companies that have had a dermaplaning program. And traditionally what you would do is prep with acetone or alcohol. Um, and that seemed to always cause problems in the treatment room. Um, because when you're using acetone, when you're using al alcohol, you are stripping the natural barrier of the skin. You are dehydrating the skin. And then you're exfoliating on top of that. And then you wanna try to put a peel on top of that. It's, it, it can lead to problems. And a lot of times um, now uh, when I troubleshoot, cause I do do coaching, um, what I'm finding is that their dermal planing technique might not be off. It might not be the blade. But then when I find out what they prepped with, a lot of times it's the prepping solution. The client could not handle that. And then when they moved on with the rest of the facial, they were too, they were too compromised and their body couldn't even handle the acidity of say a vitamin C and they were dry and tight and burnt. So we don't prep with that. We want the skin in its natural state at, when it's dry, like a natural, um, after a foaming cleanser, squeaky clean. We don't really want squeaky, squeaky clean. You know, um, we want it in a natural state, and then we're going to dermaplane over what the natural state is. Contraindications for dermaplane. Okay, so contraindications for dermaplaning are extremely similar to microdermabrasion, laser hair removal, chemical peels. So if you have a um, if you are on Coumadin, blood thinners, anticoagulants, um, those are typically questions that we do want to know in a facial because if we're using a lancet, if we are doing any electrolysis, if we are doing any um, deep extractions that might cause petechia or bruising in the skin, we wanna know if there is um, a, a medication that is going to affect your prothrombin time because you're going to bleed easier and you're gonna bruise easier. So that is a contraindication, those types of medications um, that, uh, that affect the blood thinning, which is really like the clot factor, your prothrombin time. Um, 
cancer, of course, we want to support those clients with therapeutic treatments. We don't want to compromise the barrier of the skin at all because they're already being challenged with trying to heal um, from and whatever cancer they're dealing with. Um, so we're not working with that client with dermaplaning either. So we're going to pivot um, and then and uh, just work on their goals for maintaining hydration um, and relaxation and healing. Um, and let me just get this. In the book, uh, we also want to make sure antibiotics. So if your client is on antibiotics, I want to know why. Because a lot of times they're like, oh, um, or they'll call it'll be before, before I even see them. They'll say, oh, I'm on doxycycline, blah, blah, blah. Okay, great. Why? So are you on it? Did you get a tick bite? Are you on doxy because of that? Or are you a grade three acne and you have been on doxycycline for a month and you still are dealing with papules, postules, and eruptions. If that's the case, you are not a candidate right now for mechanical exfoliation. We actually want to pivot you into um, an oxygen um, RX treatment with circadia um, and enzyme extractions, hydration, adding in LED. So you want to actually ask more questions like why are you on, you know, obviously if you don't mind, you might tell me um, what condition are you being treated for? Um, Accutane. If clients on Accutane, they're so incredibly dry that removing top layers of the epidermis oh, is so. contraindicated because they don't have enough of that barrier um, to protect the skin and to create comfort because they're actually very uncomfortable. Um, uh, acne pustule, cystic acne, cold sores, that is the same thing as uh, chemical peels, laser, any other facial procedure. Moles and skin tags. If you have a mole or a skin tag in an area, um, depending on the density per square centimeter, you can go around it. Go around it. If you have a mole right here, you can dermaplane the rest of the face. Just scoot around this. Leave it. Um, when it comes to the neck, you can dermaplane the neck. Um, but what I meant by density per square centimeter, you have a lot of people that has have a lot of skin tags, right? So if their neck um, which you don't see it too often, but if their neck is covered in skin tags, um, you'll want to switch over to an enzyme um, to treat the neck for anti-aging, go right down the decollete with that, and then you can germaplane the face. And why we're doing that is because we're not performing surgery. So if you were to take a scalpel and try to germaplane a mole or a skin tag, you're probably going to scoot that sucker right off the skin. We need to be able to keep that intact uh, because we don't have medical licenses. So that is, that's going to stay there. Now in the treatment room, if you have, um, you know, I'm looking at my skin cheek machine. If you have a skin cheek or a skin classic or anything that removes skin tags, that is a perfect opportunity to upsell, sell your clients. So they're in for a germaplane. They're in for a dermaplane. Oh, this looks wonderful. Let me take a look. Oh, okay. So I want to dermaplane your <laughs> neck, but today, but today you have a good amount of skin tags. Do they bother you? Yeah, they bother me. Well, I have a machine. If you want, we can zap these today. Um, and then next facial, we could actually dermaplane the whole neck, but we'd have to remove these first. Do you want to get that out of the way now? Oh yeah, sure. So everything that you're looking at with your client, especially during your assessment is going to tell you a whole story of what you can do to your clients, what you can't do to your clients. And then also how to do and um, what kind of add-ons could they possibly be looking for based on the products and materials you already have in your treatment room. So just be keen to those opportunities and don't miss them. Uh, I love that because it's like, Nobody tells Sonia no. You're like, let's just do the, yeah. the skin tags. Yeah. yeah. Is it bothering <laughs> you? Yes. You have to leave. You, we need to remove it. Thank you very much. It'll be just two seconds, a little bit of a nip. Oh, it's already gone. And then I move on. <laughs> uh, Botox and fillers. Um, of course, if you have a client that uh, their appointment is at 10 o'clock with you, and then they have a filler appointment at one. Yes, of course. They can have that done all in the same day. Now, if they have an appointment with you at one, but they have their Botox and filler at 10, they cannot have an appointment with you. So it has to be reversed. And that has to do with movement. We just don't want to move anything that was just placed in there. Um, we don't want to move anything that was just placed in there. You really should give about two full weeks for any type of injection to settle in. Um, another reason why we want to do that is because let's just say they ended up with some asymmetry. 
a little ptosis in the I, do you think they're going to come for the surgeon or the doctor, or do you think they're going to think that you did that? They're going to think that you did that. So I just like to dissolve myself of all responsibility and just rebook if they did have that planned or just have that communication with them to um, uh, move our appointment back or they can move their inject injection back. That's such good advice. Yeah. Yep. Um, sunburn. Obviously, we're not working on any sunburn. I'm gonna put this disclaimer out there because I've been seeing this technique for some reason become more popular. If you have a client that has scabbing, if you did a procedure on them and they are peeling and they are scabbing, you never go back in during that process of maturation and proliferation and wound healing. You never go back in and remove that with the blade. That's called a medical debridement. You cannot debride dead tissue that's still attached to healthy tissue with a scalpel that's considered medicine and we're not practicing medicine um there are a lot of um techniques coming out and they're on social media and they make me cringe because they look fun they look cool wow look at all that scab and tissue come off um what's happening is we're setting our clients up for uh, post-inflammatory or hyper Implementation um, and inflammatory response, and there's no need to do that. If they have multiple services with you or a package with you, space them out appropriately. Because even though a dermal plane is, it looks so gentle. The skin looks like a glazed donut. It's gorgeous. It is deceiving to the depth that we are taking off, and we don't want to take off skin that is healing or in the process of healing or. Um, immature cells that are trying to become mature cells. We don't want to remove that. So you need to time your appointments and your services properly. So let that heal. If they had a peel and they're peeling just because it looks dry and you want to scrape it off with the dermal plane, do not do that. Give them another week or two weeks um, and let them heal. And then you can do a light derma plane. I would, if they did a peel and they're actually physically peeling, to be honest, I wouldn't even treat them for another month or two. You just did a peel. Why are we going back in? So that's that's just my 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 take on that because I'm seeing a lot of stuff out there. And this is all in the handbook. So when you purchase the program, so if you come in person, if you take the course online, there is an entire 28 page manual that describes all this. Even the face mapping, I created this entire easy, comprehensible face map um, for you to follow along with. And this is a digital download um, a manual. So if you decide to do um, the online program, you click print, you can print this out. One thing that I actually really like doing, and I've done this with a lot of my Circadia um, uh, protocols, I will download and then I will um, go to the UPS store and I will send them all of um, the protocols that I want and they print and they bind them. So if you, whether you are a solo or you have a spa and you have employees, it is such a good idea to print out all of, pr print out all of the protocols and have them bound and then have your um, estheticians keep them in their drawer. So it's not like there's like pa papers all over the place. You have one place to house all your protocols. I love that. Next question. Best way to dermaplane a nose? Oh my goodness. <laughs> this is so good. So the best way, I have multiple videos on this and we definitely did this in the demo, but let me see. If I that can works. do that, let me see if I can do this right here and if it will like translate well using my mannequin model. The thing about the nose that a lot of people get really nervous about, um, the nose moves, right? I know that sounds weird, but when you're working on the cheek, you're bracing the cheek and it kind of stays stationary because it's the cheek. But when you grab the nose and you start working on the nose, it starts to move and that freaks people out. That's okay. Having a good sense of nervousness or fear is good because you respect what you're doing. You're holding a blade. It should make you nervous. But I also want you to feel confident about your treatment because you now will have the skills to perform this properly. So here is my mannequin head. 
And typically the client would be basically at my, my um, hip or pelvis, right? Uh, it, uh, height uh, to be able to do their facial. So for here, I'm just going to put this up. Now, when you are doing the nose, you always want to remember to brace the nose. If you are going like this, or anything like this, that is completely wrong because this hand needs to be holding the face for safety. My client never moves without me knowing or allowing them to move. And that is safety for them, safety for me. So when it comes to the tip of the nose, I will gently guide my finger right to the tip of their nose. I will take the bridge and I will use opposing traction to stretch up. And then I will, at the tip of the nose, I will start at a 45 degree angle and go up in sections. As, as I'm going up in sections, I'm also bringing up my brace fingers to continue to hold the skin taut. Um, again, I've seen, I have people send me videos all the time and it's slipped. And I'm like, I know it's wrong. We're never going down because when we go down, watch how my wrist moves right? And then we are going away from the body. We lose control of the angle. We lose control of the pressure. We lose control of the pace when we do that. You always have to go blade to belly, blade to belly. So every layer of exfoliation is when the blade comes towards you. That's how you do the bridge of the nose. Oh my gosh. Let's see, we have... Um, oil planning, they asked again, nose, you guys don't forget to subscribe to Circadia U, which the link is in the chat. Um, there is a discount because I'm going down best yep. angle to derma plane. Oh my goodness. There's only one angle. What do you mean? Best angle. Okay. <laughs> so if you get, if you don't <clears throat> learn or absorb anything today, the one thing that I want you to take from this is derma planing can only be done at a 45 degree angle. It is hard to pick up at first because you're like, well, what is 45? You have to work at a 45 degree angle or the bevel of the blade cannot properly lift skin cells up. And when the angle of the blade, let me see if I can do this. When the angle of the blade is off, okay? So if you're working at a 90 degree angle, if you try to work at a 90 degree angle, you're going to cause abrasions and friction. It'll it translate into like friction burn is what they'll experience. The angle of the blade has to be, I'm trying to see if I can do this. The angle of the blade has to be at a 45 degree angle. And um, in my videos um, on Instagram um, and the, uh, I'm trying to think, Sir Katie, you are there. I show multiple demonstrations. So if you're like, I can't see what she's doing, don't worry about it. I, and if you, if you want, I can post something right after this, but it has to be at a 45 degree angle. Um, and what's hard about that is as we're working um, up the nose, down the nose, or around the chin, the number one problem people have is that right here is a 45, but as you're working, right here, that's not a 45. That actually goes down to a five degree angle. So you have to know to naturally shift your angle as you're working over curvatures. And I would say this is the number, maybe number one or number two um, logistical problem that new practitioners have is understanding how to move your body as you're working over different portions of your client's body. Uh, but 45 degree angle. Some people will give feedback like, oh, I'm not getting, is my blade dull? I'm not picking up any hair. I'm not picking up any skin. Um, it, it, your ankle's off. If you're not working at a 45 degree angle, that bevel, the sharpest part that is made to sweep and pick up, it's not going to be able to pick up skin cells. The second I have a client or a student move their wrist up or down, depending on the angle they're starting at, and they go to that 45, 45 is like the sweet spot. The sweet spot. So once they start working at the 45, you can feel it immediately. The difference is immediate. You can also hear it audibly. It'll have an audible, it'll have an audible difference. The way um, uh, the, the stainless steel is picking up that dry skin cells. Um, so try to stay in tune with that. Definitely only 45. If you're not in 45, you're wrong. 
Advice Sorry. for journal planning You're men. You're wrong. <laughs> You're wrong. Yeah, I will die on that hill. You are wrong. Um, so advice for dermaplaning men, uh, they will absolutely love it. One, two, charge full price. Because I know a lot of SDs, once they get into dermaplaning, they're like, I can't charge them full price because I'm only really doing here up. They don't know the difference. It still is your skill. I don't, there are some women I can't do certain parts. Does that mean I'm going to nickel and dime myself down? No, you're going to charge full price for man, even though you're not working on terminal hair. Okay, that was two. Maybe I'll go back to one, three. Okay, so three, you are going to have a client for life when dermaplaning men because they love to have like their brows crisp and all that fuzz gone. And then all that fuzz, a lot of times men get up here or the fuzz they get on the cheeks. Dermaplaning is not about hair removal, but the byproduct of the exfoliation is the hair removal. So we have to talk, we do have to talk about that too. So removing that, they just feel crisp. They come out with a new attitude. They absolutely, they love it. They're standing taller. They feel like a glazed donut. They're not, they're not afraid to say it. Um, And on top of that, of course, afterwards we would do the extractions. So by being able to get that deep exfoliation on a gentleman, the extractions come out so much deeper. And then another thing that the men love about the treatment is that it's not irritating. So even though we can tease the guys that, you know, women are so much stronger, we have a stronger pain threshold, whatever. Um, Some men, the facial skincare world is still very foreign to them. So coming into the office or coming into a treatment room, they're there, they want to relax, but they're still like a little anxious, a little apprehensive, a little... And then when you put a product on that burns, it kind of can heighten the stress level, the, um, uh, the irritation level. So especially when they're new clients, I always like to dermaplane too, because I can calm them. Um, this is a deep exfoliation. It is a form of mechanical exfoliation. It's going to be gentle. So I can get a really deep treatment on this client um, without any irritation and they are relaxed the entire time. And nine times out of 10, when they leave, they're like, I didn't think it was going to be like that. That was so relaxing. I was nervous something was going to burn or really hurt. Um, So there are so many things that sometimes we forget about our male clientele, but dermaplaning is the easiest. Once they even have it one time, it is the easiest sell to have the gentleman um, dermaplane. Uh, Going back to the question about uh, technique with the dermaplane with the gentleman, we're not going near terminal hair. So we're obviously not doing the mustache area, um, the beard area. Um, If a male has little facial growth, um, so, you know, they don't have a lot of that thick terminal hair, um, use your professional judgment. Does their skin feel soft and supple enough to dermaplane over it? Does this skin feel exactly like this skin? So if this feels exactly like this, which... I think I have one client, male client like that. You can dermaplane. If there's any, if you go like this, and if there's any scratchy feeling against the back of your hand at all, we're not dermaplaning them because that that tissue is a little bit thicker, that hair is too thick, and you're going to meet resistance when dermaplaning. And when you meet resistance with dermaplaning, you do have the opportunity to cut or nick your client um, because your movements will suddenly stop. And then that's when the blade can make a little fissure or cut in the skin. So nope, we're just going to be doing um, mostly this area. Is it okay right underneath to use the steamer during the facial process after dermaplaning? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So the question again um, is, can you use a steamer? when doing a dermaplane exfoliation. Absolutely. So um, like I had said before, if you have a new client or you have a client that has been getting services for a long time, they pre-booked, they were getting your relaxation, deluxe facial, whatever you have it called, okay? They want to try the dermaplaning. You can do their traditional facial steam, cleanse. She meant once you dermaplane, can you put steam? Okay, so we're going to do our normal protocol. Then you're going to 
exfoliate with a dermaplane. Once you do that, you can go into the rest of your facial with extractions. Now, ask yourself why you're using steam, okay? Um, with circadia, if you are going to dermaplane and then you are going to say put a cocoa enzyme on or one of the zymes or um, the raspberry, I usually will go with the cocoa after a dermaplane because, um, I don't know, that's just me. I would go with the cocoa. Um, you need the steam, right? Moist heat to activate and create an enzymatic reaction depending on the client's reaction. So if they are showing any signs of urethema, irritation, um, if they have a little bit of rosacea, cupro skin, um, whatever it may be, okay? Um, they might not at that point in time be a candidate for steam anyways. So in this case, where if we wanted to put on another product that needed to be activated with the steam, right? Because I wanna think, yeah, you can steam after a dermaplane, but why are you, what, what's the use for the steam? What step are you doing? Or is it just a comfort measure? Some of my clients, um, they like the steam. So I'll put the steam on, but I'll put it far away while I'm doing the massage. They just like the steam. Um, nothing is telling me that it's contraindicated. I'll put the steam on. Um, after a dermaplane, if I have a client that is uh, rosacea or they just are a candidate for steam anyways. So if I'm using an enzyme and I need the activity, right? Cause I'm like, I need the heat and I need the moist heat to keep the enzyme active. What I will actually do is I will take four by four um, uh, non woven gauze. I'm not a fan of woven, woven gauze. I can never say that non woven. So the cotton that is really smooth, not the ones that you'd put over the face to use um, high frequency right? Um, so you would put the woven gauze moist, okay, and wa with warm water, have a bowl of warm water, moist, it, keep that moist, and then put that over the enzyme or put that over the product that needed that heat manipulation that you would have wanted to use the steam. Um, you would use that just to keep it active. Um, because and once you dermaplane and then put an enzyme on, say you use that enzyme a hundred times on them, but you haven't dermaplaned. So if you dermaplane and put that enzyme on, it is going to behave completely differently because it is going to a depth that they haven't experienced before. So if you were to add the heat onto that, you are just giving them a challenging experience. So I always tell people to build their client up. So next appointment, if they, if they did wonderful, no complaints, no irritation, you could dabble with the steam if you want. If steam is your thing, go ahead, dabble with it. But you really just need to do another assessment after your dermaplane and um, assess if now is the right time uh, during your treatment to increase the surface heat temperature. Um, if there was accidentally a cut, what yep. steps should you take? We don't call them okay. cuts, right? We call no, no, we call <laughs> them. Oh my, what do we call them? Oh adverse. my goodness, I'm having, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I'm like, we don't call, so they are adverse events. Say you're dermaplaning and you had a little nick. It's an adverse event. That's how we report it in our charts. We had a little adverse, <laughs> adverse event. Um, I would say 10 out of 10 times, if you have an adverse event on your client, it looks like a paper cut. Um, this is because when you're dermaplaning and you know you create a little cut, <gasps> you go like this, right? It's almost like you're putting your hand to a, a hot stove. We will always pull back immediately. So when you're dermaplaning, if you felt a nick or create a nick, you'll, you'll feel it, you'll know, and our reaction will always be go like this. So the depth of the adverse event, I've never seen anything on a client deeper than a paper cut. Depending on if they notice or don't notice at that time, you're going to behave a couple of different ways, okay? If they don't notice, you're still going to stop the treatment if it's bleeding and you're going to take your non woven um, four by four. Okay. And you're going to stop the treatment and you're going to say, okay, we have just a little paper cut here. I'm going to apply a little bit of pressure. You're going to continue just to use your therapeutic um, language, relaxing. Don't get all fumbly back in your treatment room or start getting crazy with your chair because you're nervous because they're hearing all of that. So you're going to handle the situation with grace and poise, and you're going to communicate that to your client. We have a little paper cut. 
I'm gonna put a little pressure on here. Once you put your pressure on, you keep your hand there. When your body gets a cut or abrasion or an injury, it's automatically going to be sending out these like rescue enzymes um, to help your skin clot, right? So if you were to put pressure on and be like, did it stop? Did it stop? What's it look like, right? Because we're curious people. We want to just look at what the cut looks like. You're removing on uh, here um, that that protein that's uh, secreted to help clot the skin. So we're not looking at it. We're not curious. We're going to keep it there for a strong 30 seconds to a minute. Just holding it, holding it. Okay, looks good. We're going to move on. And then you move on. So it's a little paper cut. No big deal. It's going to... Um, it, most of the time it doesn't continue to bleed once you get it, um, once you get it to stop bleeding. And then you work over your area as you work. Obviously avoid that little cut, um, but work over the rest of, of the rest of the area. Um, you can chart it um, as an uh, adverse event, lower right quadrant of the chin. Um, most of the time clients don't see it. So when you move on with your facial and you're doing the hydration, because we're using a scalpel, what's happening is it creates a proximal incision. So it's proximated, right? There's a beginning and then there's an end and um, it's a controlled injury. So it'll flap just like that, right? So once you um, put your serums and your moisturizers on, a lot of the times you, you can't even see it because it's already sealed and, and flapped shut. So I always take responsibility and I always let my client know I'm going to walk them through this. It'll be gone in 24 hours. It's not deep. They're fine. But I always say, oh, we'll say her name is Susan. Okay. Oh, Susan, we have just a little cut. I'm going to put pressure. By the time you put serums on, nothing. You look awesome. No, it looks great. Uh, when they go to check out, I always put like a little um, post peel bomb. Um, there's tons of samples that you can get um, from Circadia. You just have to call and order. So a little post peel bomb. They're probably not even going to need it, but this is my way of saying, I acknowledge that we created a little adverse event. Ha here's some moisturizer, just put that on for the next couple of days. It'll, it'll be gone within 48 hours. Most of the time they're like, I don't see anything, you're fine. But you never want your clients to get to the car, look in their rear view mirror and see something that you did not acknowledge and communicate to them because it makes it look like you tried to get away with something. And that's when they stop respecting you as a professional and they lose trust. So always say, you know what? I think we have like a little cut. Just handle it. That's it. And you have all the products to help support them. Um, yeah. So that's it. I will say the only times that I've seen a cut that was um, a problem uh, is always to the, I don't want to point to me, is always to the esthetician. Most injuries that need medical help. I would say all injuries that I've ever heard of that needed medical help was to the therapist because they weren't paying attention um, during the treatment and they weren't paying attention during safety um, of cleaning um, the room. They left the blade out or they left the blade in a drawer, which you'll never, you'll never do. Um, or during the removal process, they tried to get it off with their hand instead of using a sharps box, which is bananas because these babies is how we work. And if we can't use our hands, we're out of work. Circadia has in these kits, so this is um, just one of the kits um, when you take um, the uh, pro when you take our dermal plane program. In here is a sharps box. Uh, traditionally, there used to be like a clamp system to try to remove the blade. There were there were too many injuries um, to hand because people were trying to shimmy them off. It wasn't working. So this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the blade right into the sharps box. I'm going to push down. And now the blade is off and now this is secured and safe in the sharps box. And I reduce all opportunity to create an injury to myself. So that was, that was my long explanation about a cut. <laughs> I hope I event. answered it. Adverse event. That was my long explanation. Um, exactly. There's actually a cut. Somebody had a shaving question. One second. Yeah. There was a question. Sorry. No, you're How fine. long before and after can they shave after dermaplaning? So after dermaplaning. So are we talking about gentlemen? Yes. Okay. So if we're talking about gentle, let's start talking about females. Okay. Say one of your female clients has that question about shaving. They are like, oh, I want to try dermaplane. Should I shave my face? No. 
they're not shaving their face because with shave traditional shaving there is a layer of exfoliation but i want to control that i don't want my clients to do any prepping um, i want the, them to come as they are because this could also be an opportunity for me to wax them if they have a high density again per square centimeter of a lot of that vellus hair a lot of times it tends to wrap around here and go coil up a little bit behind the lower lobe um, for those people that have a little more facial hair um, i'll wax that first um, it'll last a lot longer if we remove it that way. I use a gentle soy cream. It's by New Free. It's been around a really long time. I was introduced to it when I worked in um, dermatology. I've never had any lifting with it. I've never had any heat injuries um, because it's a low temperature wax. I, I, I absolutely love it. So I will wax first and then I'll dermaplane over that. But that's another upsell for you. So when you're having the conversation about facial hair, let them know, I want to dermaplane, uh, but because of the amount of hair that you have right here, we actually need to wax that first to safely dermaplane. So your client will be waxing. You just increased your sales by, we'll say 30 bucks because it had to be done in order to safety, safely dermaplane. The results are going to last longer and I guarantee they will want you to have their wax their face from now on when it comes to gentlemen oh wait and then when you dermaplane you reduce the stroke volume so say you are going to dermaplane five to seven strokes okay now once you wax you just scoot it down to four go like three or four strokes in that area but you can definitely dermaplane right over the top of that now when it comes to gentlemen um whether they that is to their discretion i always tell them um because they ask you know do you want me to shave before my facial not shave and it's to whatever their comfort level is. If they shave every day, then yeah, shave before you come if you'd like. Um, if they don't want to shave, then don't shave. I can work over the top of any type of medium, it, whether you have hair or you don't have hair, if you have stubble, no stubble, don't worry about it. Just come as you are and I'm gonna see work with what we have. Um, yeah, so you don't have to shave. The last question, how often should someone get dermaplaned? Okay, so when you think of dermaplaning, I want you to think of deep exfoliation. So the answer will be the same that it would be with a chemical peel, the same that it would be with a microdermabrasion. Anything that is taking off top layers of the epidermis at a, at a, at a greater depth than say a gommage, you're going to want recovery time. You're going to want time for those um, for cell turnover. You're going to want time for um, any, even though there's no wound healing um, that we witness, you still want to let that healthy tissue grow and come to the surface before trying to challenge that, remove it and strip that. Because too much of a good thing is a good thing. If you keep challenging the skin or um, over exfoliating, you might temporarily for a month or two be able to get away with that before on month three, um, you have problems. So some people say, oh, I do it every two weeks. That's a problem. No, you're not doing that every two weeks. Okay. <laughs> you're going to have a professional treatment as you can have it once a month, a professional treatment once a month in a controlled environment, and you don't need to do that any sooner. You don't need to do that any sooner. Okay, so one more question. I think I answered that, yeah. One, this question is so good. Um, do you ever have people that worry about the hair growing back darker? How mm -hmm. do you, like is thicker or darker? So when a client's like, oh, I don't wanna get dermal plane because it's gonna grow back thicker or darker. Uh -huh. Okay, so I love this question. Um, I tell people, hold on one second. I want to grab a piece of paper so that I can show you. Okay, hold on one second. I love this question. When I saw it, I was like, this is a question that needs to be asked. Because it's like, every clients are like, I don't want to get it. It's going to grow back thicker. It's going to grow back darker. I know. It is. Guess what? I would be retired by now. If I could give people more hair, if I could give people thicker hair, if I could give people darker hair, I would be retired by now, okay? Because I'd be able to give people something that they couldn't get um, outside of my professional services. The only way an esthetician can encourage hair growth is through um, growth 
serums. It's something that um, stimulates the follicle to um, elongate the antigen phase of hair. And that's what the Latisse does. It boosts the antigen phase. So it makes the antigen phase um, of the hair cycle a longer. That way um, it's living longer. It can grow longer. And um, when it has more nutrients, the color and the pigment tends to be stronger also, right? That's why when you do the lash boost, you're like, oh my God, I have so much hair. It's so thick. It's so long. I didn't even know I had this hair. Um, I don't have the ability to do that. Um, same thing with removal. If, if we could remove hair and it never came back, we really would only have one client, right? Because we just got rid of all their hair. So all the waxers out there, um, all the people that are dermal planning, we would never see them again. That doesn't make any sense. We, we don't have the ability to permanently do that um, unless we're doing electrolysis. Even laser hair removal, I think you can't even FDA say that. It's, it has to be permanent reduction, I believe, permanent hair reduction. But as far as growth, I don't have the ability to do that. So this is what I show people with the hair, okay? We're gonna pretend this is a hair, okay? When you shave, okay, say, say this is, we'll say, this is the skin, okay? When you shave, this is the only part of the hair that you're taking, right? And then after a couple of days, then the hair starts to grow back, right? Because it's just a shave. It's, you're not going deep. When you have a professional dermaplane using my technique, you have to understand, say this is the hair, you're actually taking the hair shaft down to here because you're taking off so much of the epidermis that by the time you see the hair coming through, right? It is either an antigen, which is a, a new hair growth, or it could be antigen, intelligent, catagen. It could be intelligent. No, it's not gonna be intelligent. So it's either a, a, a new hair or a hair that's on its way out and ready for regrowth. Now, a lot of times, the only times actually I'll have complaints like, Oh, I don't know if I want to do that again. I feel like I have so much fuzz. Susan, I haven't seen you in three months. And let me show you your before photo because you are covered in Bella's hair. That's why we actually had to wax you. So what happened with those clients is they didn't have a frame of reference. They couldn't remember how much fuzz they had. And then in between the appointments, of course, you're going to grow your hair back. If I did nothing, your hair is still going to go through antigen, ketogen, intelligent hair growth phase, growing, dying, shedding without them even noticing. But you removed all that skin and you removed all that hair. So they felt like a glazed donut. And then three months later, they're like, look what happened. It was there. I'm just like, I turned you into a unicorn and you forgot what you looked like. Um, but yeah, so we are bringing down so much of the hair shaft with the epidermis um, that it's not growing back like your traditional shape. You're not going to see that um, thick, thick, base of that terminal hair, right? Because remember, we're not even working on terminal hair. We're working on Bella's hair. So that hair is like very soft, lighter. If someone says they're growing back a beard, they're not. <laughs> they're just not. Um, or um, you might have dermaplaned over something that should have been waxed or you shouldn't have been working on it in the first place. Because if you took it off when it was a dark, thick, long terminal, it's going to grow back a dark, thick, long terminal but you don't have the ability to encourage it. Does that make sense? Yes, no, that was perfect. So, All right. you guys, thank you so much to Sonia. Thank you, so, thank you. I appreciate you guys. If you have any questions, please reach out. Um, I definitely, whether you are interested in the German Plane Program um, or maybe not today or maybe another day, please go on circadiau.com, please register and um, just watch the videos, pick up some tips. If you're using our product line, you definitely are missing out if you're not registered. There is so much information on here. Um, you're just gonna love it. It's gonna be, you're gonna save it right on your little save bookmark tag um, on the internet and um, you're gonna be logging in. <clears throat> and then we're gonna try it's to save me out a question. Yes. Sorry to interrupt you. I just, um, I don't think it got um, answered in the thing. How do we register? Because you keep saying watch the videos. Where do we go to go watch the videos? I tuned in a little oh. late, so I might have missed it if you explain. Oh my goodness. Oh. What's your name? My name's Jay. 
hey Jay, how are you? You just like creeped in here. And I thought I was hearing voices in my chat. <laughs> I was like, oh, it's that. But I'm just kidding. Jay, thank you so very much. Um, Maria's gonna um, put the link and everything in the bio for this, but you're going to go to Circadia S or oh C C I R C A wait C oh my goodness C I R C A D I A. It's been a really long day. Circadia U dot com like you, you as in university and all you're going to do it doesn't cost anything um you're just going to sign up create um a, a profile and then you'll have access to um all the training education edu yeah okay so is the circadia you the same thing as the because um, i'm on it right now is it the yeah. same area where it, it asked me like my student number and my student um school i went to because i've registered for something right now but it was on circadia.com not circadia.u i'm sorry not circadia.u.com okay. yeah so they're two separate so circadia.com is where we are where all of our um ordering it and starting an account is um is housed right so you can order products there's product knowledge there also this is specifically the video modules and the German plane program and i think the chemical peel program is on there now so these are this is circadia it's university but it's circadiau.com so this is separate it's definitely the same company we're just housing it with um a new a new web page okay and if you need any type of help or support, feel free to message me and um, I'll send you a couple links to help you walk through that. Okay, what's your IG? You don't mind, sorry. My, my Instagram? Oh yeah, so I am the skin lady. That's it, <laughs> the skin lady. One word, the skin lady. I also put all the links in the chat. Awesome, Maria, okay. thank you so much. Thanks, but Maria. that was a great, no, that's a great question, Jay. Thank you so much for uh, for asking. Thank you. I just want to say that you were incredible and thank you so much for doing this. Oh, you're so kind. Thank you so much for joining. I really appreciate it. I know everyone works really hard and um, I'm just glad that I, we have this recorded um, so uh, Maria can post it. But I really appreciate everyone that has a show's interest and um, just wants to hear how passionate I am and lets me share um, the program. Where is the best place to message you? Um, you can message me at um, the, you can message me on Instagram at the skin lady. Um, I also can take emails at Sonia, S-O-N-I-A, at Circadia. Dot com. And like anybody else wants to pop on? Maybe we didn't answer something. No, we got we did great. We covered a lot of ground. And I know once you guys, once we get off, there a question might pop up in your head, or once you log in, or if you go back and watch any of the um gerbil planning um, actual demo that I did last time I did a live, it might generate some questions. So write down all your little notes, questions that you have, and uh, you can feel free to message me on any of those platforms, whether it's Instagram or um, a Sonia at circadia.com. That will be my email. Okay, I was gonna give people a little second, but all right, thank you so much, mm -hmm. Sonia. Oh no, um, I appreciate you. Yeah, and then we'll be saying right, you play. You got it. You got it. Thank you guys so much for having me. I really appreciate you. Thank, thank you. you.